In this video, I'm going to be covering how I have my ETC MC nodes configured. And this project has gotten a lot of traction lately, mainly because of the massive price appreciation that they have seen. And with that comes the perception of massive rewards. Uh, now, I first evaluated this project back when it was fairly new, and I decided to pass on it at that time. Um, I wasn't a fan of the licensing model, and essentially you're running a blockchain node and getting rewarded for it. For running a blockchain node, you would normally run for free, but you have to pay to run it. The, the whole process seemed really sketch to me, but I decided to give it a shot. Uh, they've recently seen massive price appreciation up to almost $2.50, and I've seen a lot of people have been having issues configuring it so that it runs optimally. And so today I'm gonna to walk you through how I have mine configured. So I am running four of these nodes, and the way I have them set up is I have each of them set up to sync off of each other. So if any one gets out of sync, it'll automatically sync from the other ones. And I'm not as dependent on external peers as you would normally be. If you jump in their Discord, you're going to see tons of people having problems saying, you know, cannot find peers. And what it boils down to is the majority of the nodes running on ETC network now are on this project. And they are not opening up their ports, which means they're not connectable to the outside world. Um, directly. Uh, they are through some P2P transaction methods, but overall, the when it's trying to connect to the peer, it's essentially trying to connect, then it's timing out, and then it's moving on to the next one. If you open up your ports, then you are essentially allowing people to connect to you, and you are further expanding the network and the usability of the network. And that's how I have all of mine set up. And in theory, other people could connect to my nodes and it would sync immediately if they configure those. And so today I'm going to show you how to configure that. We're going to start with a fresh clean build. Um, so I have a new Windows PC here and I just installed the ETC MC node. And before we get started on this, if you already have existing nodes running, you're going to want to grab your pub key, your IP address, and the port that it is running on. And so to do that, it's as simple as going to one of your nodes. So here I have a node. And the easiest way to find this is do stop node. Wait for it to stop. And then hit earn ETC POW again. And you're going to see this line right here started P2P networking, and it's going to have this self um, e-node. You want to copy this. And we're going to end up using that when we connect to our other nodes, or when we connect our other node to this node. And so if you look at what we have here, we have e-node colon slash slash our pub key, colon or at, and then our IP address. So this is localhost. You can replace this with your LAN IP or you can use your public facing IP once you do port forwarding. And this is the port it is running on. So now let's hop back on over to the brand new node. I'm gonna show you how to configure that on this node and how to set up the kind of the uh, boot node. So it's using those. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the shortcut and I'm gonna open the folder. This specific file I'm going to set to always run as admin. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up a folder. We're going to go into the geth folder. And you're going to see this batch file fast enough. We need to modify this. But in order to modify this, we need to run notepad as admin. So I'm going to do notepad, right click, run as administrator, hit yes. And now we're going to do file open and we're going to navigate to the folder where we installed the etc mc node which for me it's going to be c drive program files x86 x86 etc mc the gui folder and then the geth folder and then on this drop down do all files 
scroll down and we want to open the fast node one not the one that ends in one just the regular one and this is the command that will run when you say start node and what we can do is if we scroll all the way to the right right before console make sure you put this before console do space space you can do your space and then you can do hyphen hyphen port and here you can specify your port number so for me, I'm going to do 30309. I recommend for your first node doing 30305 and then incrementing from there. So my first node runs on 30305, my second one on 30306, third one on 7, fourth one on 8. This is my fifth one, so we're putting it on 9. And then we're going to do space, and then we can do dash dash boot nodes. And then here, this is where we will copy and paste or rather paste what we copied. And if you remember, we copied the self equals enode. We're gonna take out the self equals part and we're gonna paste in here. So it's gonna be dash dash boot node space enode colon slash slash our pub key at, and we're gonna replace this IP address. And again, this is up to you. You can either use your local network IP or you can use your internet IP. So for me, I'm actually gonna grab um, all of my boot nodes and you can comma separate these. And that's what I'm going to do here. So instead of pasting in all of those, or just that specific one, I'm gonna paste in my whole allotment. And that's what we see here. So if I scroll over, you can see I have my first node here and we have at we've got our ip address and we can see it's running on 30305 and then we've got our second one which is running on six our third one's running on seven our fourth one is running on eight so this is what your config file should look like um, this perimeter both these perimeters are optional you don't have to specify them but it does streamline it a lot better once you do that you can do Control s to save and go ahead and close this now the next thing we need to do is configure the firewall. A lot of people just turn the firewall off. I like to leave it on and then do firewall, click check firewall status, then click advanced settings. And then under inbound rules, we're gonna right click do new rule. And we're gonna create two inbound rules and two outbound rules. So the first one's gonna be port. And we're gonna do TCP and the port that we specified for this node to run on. Hit next, hit allow, next again, and then etcmc is just what I'm gonna call it. And then we're gonna do the same thing again, except we're gonna do UDP on the port. Instead of TCP, do 30309, and then etcmc, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the outbound rules. Three zero nine. Now, when you do outbound, by default it does block. Make sure you click allow. Next, Go ahead and name that, and we'll do that one more time. And this time we're going to do UDP three zero three zero nine. Again, make sure you click allow. Next, next, etcmc. All right. So now our firewalls are set up. And if you haven't already, make sure you forward this in your router or whatever networking gear you're running so that it is accessible to the outside world. And now we should be able to launch this. Yes. And then once it opens, we're gonna click Geth Client. So our first time launching it, so just hit OK. And now we're going to hit Earn ETC PAL. We're not going to register it yet. We're going to make sure it syncs. So just give this a moment, and it should start connecting to the peers. And here we can see it's listening on 909, and you can see it has already started syncing. So it's immediately syncing, and what it's doing is it's actually syncing down from all of our other nodes that are on our network. 
and this will allow it to sync a whole lot faster than trying to go out to the outside world. The advantage here is it will also use our nodes within our own network to maintain itself. So even if one of those nodes gets out of sync, they'll kind of keep each other in sync as long as a single node is kept in sync to the outside world. It'll kind of replicate itself across all of them. And that's pretty much all it is to the setup. So it's pretty much now let it just sync, run. You would register your node. Um, if you want full step-by-step -step instructions on how to set this up, there are plenty of videos out there. I think Rabbit did some, Rabbit Mining did some, I think Chump Change XD did some. Uh, there are tons of videos on getting these nodes up and running end to end. But I wanted to cover this specific part of you know being able to configure it to connect to your other nodes because that is a piece that looks like a lot of people uh, just aren't sure how to do it. even on the discord i didn't really see anybody talking about setting up boot nodes that allows it to kind of keep all your nodes together in sync and while it's churning through this uh, you might see some errors occasionally pop up like uh, error flushing cache things like that that's all totally normal uh, just let it run and everything should get synced up after a few hours.